Hello and welcome to this tutorial video for the Marienberg Devices VC Envelope Generator B, which is a versatile analog ADSR module in 5U format with a bunch of tricks up its sleeve. In this video I will quickly tell you what sets this module apart from other envelope generators and I will explain the front panel controls so that you can start having fun with your module right away. If you'd also like to read about these topics, follow the links to my extensive forum threads in the video description below. The main difference to regular ADSR envelopes is that the Marienberg module divides the attack, decay and release stages into two parts, each with their own slope angle. In combination with the rest of the module's features, this allows you to create envelopes which will work well with any modulation target, something that has been tremendously overlooked in many synthesizer designs in the past. What does that mean exactly? Here's an example. You've probably been in a situation where you've patched an ADSR signal into a VCA, but no matter what you dialed in, the sound just wasn't snappy enough. Many people blame the envelope then, but it's actually not the whole truth, because what you hear is the interplay between the envelope's shape and the VCA's control voltage response. So your envelope could actually have a snappy slope, but the VCA's unsnappy response to it might simply negate that. Unfortunately, most ADSR and VCA modules don't let you fine-tune slopes and responses, if they let you adjust them at all. So you might have to test a lot of envelopes and VCA combinations in order to find the sound you desire, a process which can be expensive, time-consuming and which is certainly not fun. The Marineback VC Envelope Generator B really puts an end to this search as it gives you the control you need to create the sound you want with the modulation targets that you have, like your favorite analog filters or VCAs. Now this might seem like a bold claim and honestly I wasn't psyched to test and demonstrate an ADSR module at first. I mean ADSRs are boring, right? But when Stefan Marienberg explained these concepts to me, backed up by his years of research into classic analog synthesizers, it started to make absolute sense and playing with the module has been an eye-opening and surprisingly exciting experience for me. Okay, before we look at the front panel controls now, here's a quick explanation of a typical ADSR signal so that we're all on the same page. When an ADSR is started by a gate signal, the attack state rises at a defined slope angle from 0 volt to a maximum, which is 10 volts in this case. After the 10 volts have been reached, the decay phase starts which falls at a defined slope angle from 10 volts to the sustain voltage level. The sustain level can of course be set to anything between 0 and 10 volts. It lasts as long as the gate signal is high. When the gate signal goes low then, the release stage starts. Again, it falls at a defined slope angle until it reaches 0 volt. Alright, let's look at how the Marienberg VC Envelope Generator B module works now. At first glance, the front panel might seem a little complex with its many knobs, switches and sockets, but it's actually quite simply laid out and easy to use. To get started, patch a gate signal into the gate input and take the envelope signal from the env output. For normal operation, set the manual gate switch to the middle position and the rest of the switches to OFF and FR. I'll talk about those features later in this video. The first three rows control the attack, decay and release stages of the envelope. So those three rows do the exact same things, just for a different stage. Looking at the attack row, the first knob adjusts the slope angle or rise time of the first attack part. The second knob sets the voltage threshold after which the second attack part takes over. And the third knob adjusts that second attack part's slope angle. What's important to understand here is that the threshold knob markings actually correspond to a voltage between 0 and 10 volts. So by remembering that an attack stage always rises from 0 to 10 volts, we can very intuitively set this threshold. For example, by setting the threshold to 10 volts, the second attack will never take over. Setting the threshold to 0 volt will skip the first attack. Any threshold in between will then divide that 10 volt range between the first and second attack parts. The rightmost knob in the row, labeled Entire Attack, adjusts the slopes of both attack parts simultaneously, thus changing the duration of the entire attack stage. What's also cool is that all four parameter knobs have CV inputs as well. 
Now let's check out the second row, which controls the decay stage. Like I said, the knobs are the same, but the decay is obviously a falling signal. It starts at 10 volts and falls until it reaches the sustain level, which is set with the lonely sustain knob in the fourth row. As we've seen before, the decay stage is also divided into two parts at a threshold voltage. Having both threshold and sustain level makes the decay a bit different than the attack stage. Due to their absolute voltage ranges, the threshold can be below the sustain level. If this is the case, the second decay will be skipped, of course, because the decay stage ends before the threshold is reached. So if you want to use both first and second decay parts, then the threshold level must lie above the sustain level. To make it easier to spot when the threshold is below the sustain level, an error LED will light up next to the sustain knob. Okay, third row. Release. When the gate signal ends, the release stage starts and falls from the sustain level down to zero volt. Again, we have a threshold and two parts, first and second release. With the release stage, we now have the opposite situation to the decay stage. Here, the threshold can be higher than the sustain level, which would skip the first release part. Another error LED will light up next to the sustain knob if that's the case. If this all seems complicated to you, rest assured that it's actually not, thanks to the absolute ranges of the sustain and threshold knobs. When playing with the module, you simply dial in your sustain level and then turn your decay threshold knob to a higher value and the release threshold knob to a lower value. Now onto the bottom of the module. As already discussed, we have the sustain level knob with a CV input as well. There is also a lot of gate outputs, one for each stage part and another one for each entire attack, decay and release stage. These are very useful to trigger or synchronize external modules to your envelope, letting you create seriously wild modulation signals. Check out my audio demo video for some crazy envelope examples and also watch out for my upcoming tutorial video about advanced patching techniques of this fine module. At the very bottom then we have the gate input with an LED. Then there is the time compress CV input. This modulates the duration of the entire envelope, so all stages together. The higher the control voltage, the shorter the overall duration. Next we have another two gate outputs, envelope on and envelope off. Envelope on will be high as long as the envelope is active, so from the start of the attack to the end of the release stage. Envelope off is high when the envelope is inactive. Patching envelope off into the gate input will make the envelope loop, turning the module into a complex LFO or even a VCO. The next output is the sustain level output, which is simply the voltage set by the sustain knob. The last two outputs are the regular envelope signal output and an inverted version of it for negative modulation, which we will find to be a very important output in my upcoming video about advanced patching techniques. Okay, well, we've come quite far and the only thing left on the front panel are a bunch of switches. The one labeled manual gate sends an internal gate signal to the gate input, triggering the envelope. Flipping it to the left switches a constant gate signal on. Middle position is off and the right position is a momentary on, so the switch will snap back to the middle position when you release it with your finger. So this lets you play the envelope without an external gate signal which is useful for testing or for live performing. The retrigger switch defines what happens when another gate signal is received while the envelope is still active. When off, the envelope will simply start its attack stage again from the current voltage level. When on, the envelope will immediately drop the signal level to zero volt and then start the attack stage. This can make an important audible difference for sequences with varying tempo or varying envelope durations. The auto offset switch is something very special now. Flicking it on will offset the whole envelope so that the sustain level always remains at zero volt. Adjusting the sustain knob then will shift the stages around it up or down the signal range. What the heck is this and why would you need this? I mean, it's a weird thing and I'm sure we all like weird stuff in our modulus, so that would probably already be a good enough reason. But of course it's not the way that Marienberg do things. So there is indeed a very important musical application. Imagine having a complex patch with precisely dialed in filter cutoffs or frequency modulation and you want to add an envelope to the modulation mix to add some pop. Since the envelope is only positive though, it will whack your whole patch out of tune with the keyboard key being pressed. Auto offset prevents this by keeping sustain at zero volt, so there will be no modulation at that important time, only before and after during attack, decay and release stages. Auto offset also has a gate input to toggle it on or off externally. 
The next switch is decay to release, which is very simple. It overrides the release stage with the decay stage values. So when switching it on the decay knobs control both the decay and release parameters. This one's for the keyboard players out there who sometimes want to make envelope signals fall quicker while playing fast solos. In those situations you only have one hand free so you can only turn one knob and not both decay and release knobs at the same time. The last two switches control the so-called forced mode. When set to the left the envelope will work normally. Switching it to the middle will make the envelope always play through the entire attack stage or even further through the entire decay stage too, which is set with a selection switch. This is useful when you have sequences with varying gate lengths and don't want very short gates to prematurely move your envelope into the release stage. Switching the switch to the right will enable the so-called only force mode. This will only play the attack stage or both attack and decay stages no matter how long the gate signal is so there won't be a sustain and release stage. This is nice for sounds that should be independent from gate lengths like some percussion sounds for example. Alright, that's the front panel controls of this awesome module. Again, check out my audio demo video and also my upcoming video about advanced patching techniques which will teach you how to create non-linear envelopes and other cool stuff. As always, like, share and subscribe with the bell and post your questions and comments below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.